Since April 2024, Russians took control of more territories than Ukrainian counter-offensive last year. The American press comments on the progress of the Russian army on the battlefield. At the same time, American journalists are dejected by the fact that this progress not only virtually nullified the success of the Ukrainian army during last year's counter-offensive, but also makes the military assistance that Ukraine previously received from its allies completely meaningless. An article appeared in the Washington Post stating that just from the beginning of April 2024, the Russian army took control of more territories than the Ukrainian armed forces conquered during their 2023 counter-offensive. Thus, the Ukrainian armed forces even lost the town of Rabotino, designated by the Kyiv regime as the main success of the battles in the summer-autumn of last year. Let us recall that at the time the Ukrainian armed forces were planning to reach the borders of Crimea, but they were only able to reach Rabotino and also take control of several villages on the so-called Vremevsky Ledge. To date, Russian troops have taken control of more than 20 square kilometers of territory in the north of the Kharkov region, including the territory of the Kharkov region. At the same time, the Russian army is advancing in the area of the village of Liptsy and in Volchansk near Kharkov, southwest of Umansky and south of Chasov Yar, northwest of Verbovoy in the Zaporozhye region and in a number of other directions. The command of the Ukrainian armed forces is throwing reserves into battle and Zelensky claims that the Ukrainian troops have enough ammunition. The ongoing conflict in the Kharkiv region has prompted Ukraine to withdraw its troops from several villages along the border, with soldiers relocating to safer positions in response to heavy fire from Russian forces. Moscow claims to have gained control over additional settlements in the Kharkiv region, including Lukyansky and Lybok and Robotine in the southern Zaporizhia region. U.S. and Europe are going to put pressure on Zelensky to start negotiations. Western countries are already tired of supporting the Kyiv regime and are now trying to convince Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky to begin negotiations on a peaceful settlement. Europe One reports this, citing informed sources. According to the sources, Ukraine is now at risk of much worse developments than what we currently see. Therefore, it is better for Kyiv to start peace negotiations with Russia in order to avoid further deterioration of its position. The Western armies seem to have come to their senses. Ukraine will have to negotiate an end to the war, risking a worst-case scenario in which the Russians open another front. Europe One notes, now the United States and Europe are going to put pressure on Zelensky to start negotiations. But much depends now on whether it will be possible to convince Zelensky, who in himself is a figure to whom the West should listen, at least for propaganda purposes. In any case, the position of Western countries is not yet very clear. The fact that Western leaders publicly support Kyiv does not mean that they are truly committed to further escalation of the conflict. But on the other hand, it would be enough to suspend military and financial assistance, which would make it possible to more effectively push through one's position and convince Zelensky to start negotiations. Recall there will be a peace conference for Ukraine in Switzerland. To date, 50 countries out of 160 invited delegations have confirmed they will attend the Ukraine peace conference due to be held in central Switzerland in mid-June according to Swiss public radio RTS. The meeting will take place from June the 15th and 16th at the five-star Bergenstock Hotel above Lake Lausanne in central Switzerland. We are preparing intensely at the diplomatic level to convince those who have not yet made announcements, Nicholas Bido, the head of communications at the Swiss Foreign Ministry, told RTS. NATO countries may use their air defense systems to shoot down Russian missiles. NATO Secretary General in 2009 to 2014, Anders Fogh Rasmussen said that the alliance countries could use air defense systems located in Eastern Europe to shoot down Russian missiles and drones aimed at Ukraine. He said this in an interview with the British publication iPaper. Rasmussen said interceptor missiles from neighboring NATO countries such as Poland and Romania could shoot down Russian airstrikes that target Ukraine. Earlier this year, some NATO members, namely the US, UK and France, are known to have deployed fighter jets to help Israel's air defenses intercept Iranian drones and missiles. 
Rasmussen noted that the military alliance could do the same thing to help Ukraine shoot down Russian air targets that are approaching. He suggested that NATO air and missile defense systems could be combined with Ukrainian ones. According to the former NATO Secretary General, such efforts would protect Ukraine much more effectively by protecting its defense industry and jump-starting recovery, in return avoiding NATO troops being sent into the country. Recall, as of March 2024, Ukraine's partners provided almost $118 billion in direct military assistance, including air defense systems, namely the American ATACMS air defense systems, which were used by Ukraine with devastating effect. Despite this, according to the Wall Street Journal, the rate of interception of air targets by Ukrainian air defense fell from 46% over the past six months to 30% last month. Earlier, Politico journalists reported that Ukraine is putting pressure on the Joe Biden administration so that the United States allows the use of American weapons to strike Russia. The main problem now is that the White House policy limits our ability to strike military targets inside Russia, said the head of the Servant of the People, David Arakamia. In turn, the head of the Office of the President of Ukraine, Andriy Ermak, said that Ukraine offers a clear time frame for joining NATO. According to him, a date no later than July 2028 is being discussed.